I gotta get you on sometimes. You've got the you've got the Robert Plant stories. You've got the Jimi Hendrix stories. You've got everything, Jimmy. But you you you've got to write a book someday. I tell you, you have seen everything, my friend. Well, well, thank you. I was I was real uh, honored and uh, it was my pleasure, you know, to see BB so many times. And uh, you know, he would always come through town, and uh, and we would try to go see him, or we'd see him somewhere, and. Uh, uh, he he would always be real sweet to my kids, and uh, he was just a great guy all the way around, besides being a fabulous musician and uh, uh, such an innovator, you know? Well, I knew, I mean, growing up, that's what my dad listened to. You know, when my mom was putting the records on, it would be like, you know, Led Zeppelin, Bob Dylan, the Rolling Stones. But when my dad was playing stuff, it'd be, you know, Fats Domino and B.B. King, and he, he took me to see both of them. I've, I've seen B.B. King twice and Fats Domino once, uh, and just amazing that the, I mean, these guys, some of them are still alive. It's like you hear BB King still alive and you go, gosh, that guy, it's like the granddaddy of it all. And then they're finally gone. It just shows you they are human. Yeah. It, it, well, it, it doesn't seem real. It's one of those things where it, it just doesn't seem real. You know, it's true, but it doesn't seem real. You know, uh, the last time we saw him, um, was at uh, crossroads and I guess here in Austin at the, uh, you know, downtown at the, at the theater, uh, the Paramount. And uh, we got to go down there and see him, and uh, oh, he was just fabulous. Did you he cry? When, when did you hear he died, and did you cry, Jimmy? Ah, uh, last night. Yes, yes, I did. Yes, I did. And uh, and uh, you know, we we were, you know, he was uh, very uh, fatherly to my family, and we would always go see him, and he would always, you know, talk to the kids and uh, bounce them on his knees and all that stuff, you know, just like a a, a relative would, you know. He was the greatest. Well, a big, big bummer, Jimmy. But, you know, he's got incredible accomplishments behind him. And uh, he's uh, given birth to so much great art uh, in this culture. It's really amazing. I, I wonder what your brother uh, you know, th thinks about all this. Well, I was wondering if uh, maybe, you know, uh, they're, they're together now. <laughs> That's what I think. I don't think there's any doubt about it. If there is a heaven, and we know there is, they're, they're there together. And... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. They're playing harps up there, probably playing guitars. <laughs> I think they're playing guitars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jimmy Vaughn. Uh, Jimmy, tell us about what's coming. I know you've always got tours going. You've always got stuff happening. Uh, what's the best place for folks to find out everything uh, Jimmy Vaughn and company? Well, they can go on my Facebook or they can go on uh, JimmyVaughn.com and, and see where I'm going to be. It's all posted. Well, Jimmy, tell Robin and the girls I said hi, and uh, I'm sure we'll see you at my daughter's birthday party if you're in town coming up. Thank you so much, Jimmy. All right. You do the same. Thanks, Alex. All right. Thanks for seeing uh, BB off here on the show. All righty. Bye-bye. Tell you, that is a gentleman right there. Jimmy Vaughn, is, I've, I've known him like 15 years now. Super classy. And I met him the same way I met uh, Willie Nelson. He came to the showing of Road to Tyranny, 2002. Uh. And there he was his girlfriend, Robin Vaughn, and we hung out and talked a little bit. And then I got to know him real good after that, but uh, it, was, it was weird. I, I see more of these movie showings. That's how folks come out and see me. <laughs> like, hey, it's Willie Nelson. He's here to see the movie. And uh, pretty, I mean, it's great how many of these guys are patriots, though, Jakari. It's exciting. Yeah, we had a chance to see uh, Reverend Horton Heat. We went out uh, a couple weeks ago, a lot of us in the crew, and he's a real big fan. Uh, Joe was telling me that. Yeah. Who isn't a fan of the show? <laughs> I better behave myself with all these viewers and listeners. Hey, he said he's down to come on, so I don't know uh, Let's get him on. what his tour schedule is. But well, Next time he's coming uh, through, we can go in interview him on the scene or something. Mm -hmm. I tell you, Jakar, and we're not bragging about the show being big. It's actually scary. It's just that freedom is popular, Jakari. It is. We're going to skip this network break, so I have time to go into overdrive and take calls. I got Jakari in here, but right during the last break at 33 after, I went, Buckley, here's my cell phone. Call Jimmy Vaughn. If he's not on tour, he'll probably answer. Get him on, and he, he came on, so, this, so that happened. I yeah. mean, you know, B.B. King is a big cultural icon, so I think it's important we spend some time on that. Because we spend so much time on negative crap, why not celebrate the cool people? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And then you can have somebody on, like Jimmy Vaughn, to liken it to, you know, bring it full circle. Let people know that people in the entertainment industry, they are awake and aware of things that are going on. Yeah, I know my dad's going to be bummed out. He's, I think B.B. King's probably his favorite person. Really? I mean, I mean music-wise. Yeah. You know? My dad was a real big Hendrix fan. Oh, yeah. Jimi Hendrix, amazing. But see, that all came out of B.B. King. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's just amazing. See, think how this show is influencing people. I'm not comparing myself to B.B. King. I mean, 
the bad stuff I'm doing is influencing people. <laughs> it's crazy to have that much influence. Uh, Jakari, uh, this is just the newest attack on guns. It's not just New Jersey. Other states are doing similar stuff. So check your state, folks. But tell us about this. We're going to air this special report. Yeah, because, Alex, uh, we started out the year talking about the green tip ammunition, the ATF coming after that. And before that, we were talking about the sanctions on the AR-15s, the AR-15 ammo. And, of course, we also see these uh, proponents, these anti-gun politicians coming after your guns while committing gun crimes themselves. We saw uh, Senator Yee last year in California running guns. And also earlier this month, we saw the representative in Michigan, you know, shooting his wife's car with a shotgun. Just all these wild things going on. Yeah, what is it about these anti-gunners? They're the ones misbehaving with guns. Well, I think it is like I think it's to the point where they think everybody's like them and they know how they are. So we got to ban everybody's guns. That's actually who's the guy that threatened to shoot me, Buzz? What's that guy's name on on Pierce I'm not Morgan? Sure. Oh, Buzz Bissinger. Uh, Bissinger. Buzz Bissinger. He yeah. said later in an article he wrote and in another interview he goes, "Look, I'm crazy. I'm mentally ill. I'm on medications. I spend millions of dollars on women's clothing. I'm not the one making this up." Yeah, I saw the picture of the guy. He said, "I'm crazy. Don't let me have a gun." And so they, that's what they say. Don't let him have one. He's crazy, too. Yeah. So they, he thinks I'm nuts like him. Yeah, I think that's what it is. They understand their own fallacies and like, well, he can't be any better than me. So we have to take away all the guns. So but now we have this uh, this latest attack. This is from a New Jersey representative, Miss Bonnie Watson Coleman. And this is H.R. 2283, known as the Stop Online Ammunition Sales Act of 2015. And basically, it will require a face to face interaction to purchase ammunition. It already has 30 co-sponsors, uh, House Democrats, and it would also require federal government to issue a license to ammunition dealers. So it will be on the FFL. Now, if you want to go down to Cargill shop or whatever, he has to have uh, a license to sell you a box of 223 ammunition. And that's the move. And we've always known they wanted to do that and, and restrict the lead. And, and then, meanwhile, I had Al Jazeera interview me last night. And this guy was American. Mm -hmm. He kept saying, no one wants your guns. No one's taking guns. They always, and I went, here's, and he goes, no, they're not. <laughs> For like 10 minutes, I just said, dude, I'm, I'm done. Yeah, yeah I mean, well, it was just like, it's, it's like, just like when you guys, well, we all went out to the Alamo, but you guys had a chance to talk to the, the anti-gun group out there. Nobody's trying to take your guns while they hand you a flyer saying ban all uh, fully automatic rifles. Or semi-auto. Yeah, semi-auto. I mean, it's, it's this uh, mental illness that they're saying nobody's trying to take your guns. You got Feinstein, you got Bloomberg, you got Boxer. Ban them all. Yeah. Yeah, if I could, if I had the, the votes in the Senate, I would have picked up every single one of them, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in, but nobody wants your guns. And they, and they take these people... What is these games they play? Yeah, and they take people failing at their attempt to take away guns as nobody's trying. Just like I talked to that guy, was it South by Southwest? He's like, nobody's trying to take your guns. I'm like, yeah, they are trying to take your guns. They keep trying and failing. But that's not for lack of trying. These people want to take away your firearms because they understand their own foul. And hey... Now they're saying nobody wants a secret treaty because TPP got voted down for now. So we keep barely having victories because of their tactic of denying it's happening. I mean, it doesn't work on us, Shikari, but remember the general public's not paying attention. Yeah. So they actually hear this and go, oh, there's no problem? Yeah, I go back to watching Sports Center. Let's play this uh, breakdown. This was going to be on the nightly news. It still will be, but we're going to premiere it here on the radio right now. Here's another way they're coming after the Second Amendment. Jackson and the Info War. Jakari Jackson here, InfoWars.com. We have a new article on the site. House bill seeks to eliminate online ammo sales. And this is a New Jersey representative, Bonnie Watson Coleman, and HR 2283, known as the Stop Online Ammunition Sales Act of 2015. And it would require face to face purchases of ammunition. And with our Second Amendment in the United States of America, I don't have any issue with you buying your ammunition over the Internet. And I don't think that personal sales of firearms or ammunition require background checks. I know a lot of people want to have those uh, on ammunition sales as well. I don't agree with this because you could just as easily walk into a Bass Pro Shop, Cabela's Academy, wherever, put down, you know, $1,000 by $1,000 worth of ammunition. Yeah, that's, you know catches people's attention but it is very much legal in the United States of America and to anybody would say well you know they're stocking up all this ammunition they're gonna go out there and, and shoot somebody oh look what just happened in Garland Texas and I definitely hope that Miss uh, Representative Coleman here takes a look at the Department of Homeland Security 
because I'm going to bring up a throwback article from back in 2013. And the reason I'm bringing up this old article, they have many more rounds of ammunition now, but I like the point that Watson makes in this. They had purchased enough ammunition to fight the war in Iraq for another 30 years. And this is the Department of Homeland Security. This isn't the military. You know, somebody, you know, they got to be worried about some Red Dawn situation. This is the Department of Homeland Security has this massive amount of ammunition. I definitely hope somebody will take a look into that. Also, DHS purchasing paper targets of pregnant women and little children. And when I say children, I'm not talking about some 17-year-old in a trench coat. I'm talking about a little 10-year-old boy is holding his gun like this and smiling and grinning. And then we wonder why we have shootings like what happened to Tamir Rice when you're teaching these guys that, you know, some child could easily be your enemy is out to kill you. So that's what's going on on that front. Also, they're trying to ban body armor in states like California, which I'm also against because, you know, just me doing the job that I do, myself, Joe Biggs, and some of the other crew members, we go out to very dangerous situations, and sometimes we take body armor with us. And it's not everybody's like, well, you got to worry about the crowd. When I was out in Ferguson, I had little to no issue with the crowd. Like, yeah, there's some guy who wanted to argue with me about you know, how cool it was to burn down buildings and stuff. But by and large, I was more concerned about my safety from what the police were doing. The police were shooting rubber bullets, at least when we got we were there back in August. In November, they were much better behaved. But when we were out there in August, they were shooting rubber bullets indiscriminately into a blinding cloud of tear gas. You know, and Joe Biggs, of course, got shot with a rubber bullet, had a nice big bruise to show for his efforts. So we have body armor. We have soft body armor. We have a hard plated body armor, which is like basically strapping a skillet to yourself and running around. But we have it just to deal with these type of situations, gas masks as well. And, you know, other people, they may have them for other things. If you just want a, a bulletproof vest for home defense, that's your business. I don't think the government should be able to tell you not to do that. And while we're talking about the DHS arming up with so many rounds of ammunition about people using these things for self-defense, let's also talk about the other things that are going on in our government. Let's start with running guns into Mexico with Operation Fast and Furious. New documents obtained by CBS News show Attorney General Eric Holder was sent briefings on the controversial Fast and Furious operation as far back as July 2010. That directly contradicts his statement to Congress. And for you guys who don't know about this, no, I'm not talking about Vin Diesel and all those guys. Operation Fast and Furious, which happened under the Justice Department, was a plan to give, well, not just a plan, something that's actually implemented and done. They handed over functioning weapons to Mexican drug cartels to track the weapons. So I guess their logic was, was like, yeah, we'll uh, let these guys take these guns, functioning guns, not malfunctioned or, you know, not uh, deformed or any way. We'll give these guys the guns to go out there and commit crimes, and then when we catch these guns at the crime scenes, we'll know these guys uh, were handlers of the guns. We'll be able to trace the guns back, which makes no sense because how many innocent people are going to die in this plan before it comes to fruition? And also, beyond that, you want to talk about arming of people, let's talk about arming ISIS rebels. The article came out last year, airdropping grenades into the hands of ISIS. And people will say, this is not a big deal. A pallet of grenades is not going to take down the US military. I do agree, but what about all the innocent civilians who are unarmed in those regions? They have to conflict with this now. Disarming people isn't the way to go. And we saw this recently with the representative in Michigan, you know, shooting his shotgun at his ex-wife's car. Shakari Jackson signing off. You can find more reports on the Alex Jones channel on YouTube. All right, that's a good report Jakari put out, but what Jakari's really doing, I asked somebody in the office to step up and do this a few weeks ago. Jakari's volunteered. Next Thursday, we'll, he'll be on the show this Sunday, at least calling in or in studio, to announce a very important demonstration, a pro-life demonstration we're going to have next Thursday during the show. We'll announce this Sunday or Monday. We haven't picked the, the Planned Parenthood place yet. We're going to be outside of it, not on their property, holding up signs that say Black Lives Matter because 50-plus percent of black people are aborted. We're going to do that. It could become national news. We need to get all the pro-life people out there to be at this event next Thursday, and we'll announce that this Sunday. I know. I mean, it's worse than prison food if it's following the Michelle Obama program. I went to public school, and quite frankly, those lunches were tasty. They might have had a little too much caloric intake, but uh, good salads, good hamburgers, enchiladas, uh, soups.
but not now. You look at the food now, man. It is it is supermax prison food beyond. Corey in Minnesota, you're.